Hey there, guys. We just had the live stream for June 23rd, the 8th anniversary. And in this video, we're going to be going over quite a bit of information. It was a pretty good live stream overall. And this time, I invited Tommy to discuss it with me. He's been on before, but go ahead and introduce yourself yet again, Tommy. Hey again, everybody. This is Tommy. Um, I was uh, on Sinzar's weekly videos a couple of times back in the uh, August-September time frame last year. So happy to be back. Lots of cool stuff to talk through. For sure, for sure. And I'm going to go ahead and say just up front in the video. So I do recognize that this is the anniversary stream. And the point of the anniversary stream is to be like celebratory. Um, you know, hyping up things, being excited, being positive. So even though there are certainly some issues with the game going on, um, especially if you were like watching the live stream chat, there was certainly some back and forth among the viewers about good and bad things going on. But in this video, we're going to mostly just focus on the positive stuff. You know, I'll have more videos in the future. We can definitely cover all the other things going on in the game. But for now, we're going to be happy and we're going to go over the good things about Brave XPS for this anniversary. How's that sound, Tommy? Sounds good to me. I love it. All right. So overall, before we get into it, just give me your overall thoughts on the live stream. Did you think it was it was you know well structured? Was it entertaining? Was it were you enjoying watching it, or were you sitting there you know bored, tapping your fingers on the desk? You know, what was your just overall impressions of the live stream from you? Yeah, I think for me the first hour was really really good. It was full of content, full of unit kind of uh, descriptions, full of rewards and sort of uh, kind of celebration. And you know, when they got a little bit into the back half hour or so, there was a little bit of a drag to some of the fundamental forces kind of conversation and the backstory about all that. I, I thought it could have been a little bit shorter, but, but that first hour was amazing. I think Hiroki did a great job of bringing in the hype and and uh, given rewards. So um, overall, I thought it was a really good stream. Just, you know, that last half hour was a little bit tedious by the end. That's pretty much my exact thoughts. I was going to give my all, my thoughts as well. But honestly, I would just be repeating exactly what you just said. First part was great. Second part, like, I, I understand the purpose of it. But it, for me, was a little, like, I, I started to zone out somewhat in the last, the last section. Mm -hmm. Overall, yeah. good stream. Good stream. Yeah, it was. I thought it was really well done. So we're going to go through the content in order of the stream, because that's how I was taking my screenshots. And also for a few people that were asking during the stream chat, like, why doesn't Sinzar really interact during the stream that much? Because during these streams, I am spending 90% of it taking screenshots, cropping them, getting them prepared. And by the time the screenshot is prepared for my video, there's a new screenshot to take. And, like, I'm just doing screenshots left and right during the whole time, which leaves me very minimal time to interact with chat during the stream itself. So you get the after video instead. Mm -hmm. And they were kind of shotgunning in the beginning, so you must have been really tapping to keep up. <laughs> oh, for sure. They were going really quick. Like, oh my god, like every, every time I posted a screenshot and got it prepared, like a next one is right there about to pop off the screen. I'm like, oof. Yeah, they, yeah were... <laughs> they, were, they were shotgunning for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, so real quick, we're just going to go over a few of the rewards they covered. So the summary here is you're getting a ton of free pulls, a bunch of guaranteed Neos, um, more stuff. Make sure you log in every day. I'm always happy to see this, the Player Appreciation Summon, where you get uh, more tickets the longer you've logged in. Although in the previous anniversaries, i got to be honest here, I usually don't walk away with anything impressive from these. How about you, Tommy? Do you usually have good luck from these these anniversary summons, or is this like a whole bunch of old stuff for you? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can't think of any years where I've kind of came out like a bandit on that. I, I do end up end up with a lot of unit fusing to do for sure with, like, with these 10 pulls, and, um, you know, having played like 2,900 days, I'm going to be curious to see what what that equates to as far as how many tickets we get because they don't really specify here but yeah no I, I i i would be happy with one or two good units coming out of these polls mm -hmm. for sure for sure um <clears throat> again a whole bunch more free polls you know we're not going to really break it all down it's just you're going to be getting a large amount of free polls during the anniversary um, and yet again, more login bonuses. I was a little unhappy to see the uh, Lapis Replica. I was hoping that would go away with that. I didn't really expect them to, but I was hoping. Unfortunately, it still seems to be here. So 
that kind of sucks. Yeah, I mean, that's just a given at this point. I think they mentioned that they introduced this last year at the seventh, seventh year, so, um, I mean, it's, it's a good way to not give real lapis, I suppose, but, I mean, if they, I wish they would just bring back unit shards and stuff then I, it would be fine but yeah it's it's kind of a kind of a waste at this point for sure for sure like that would make it feel way way better if they brought back the shards but yeah yep then we get the new units so we got two new units ethne and fundamental forces which is basically elena i'm pretty sure but uh she's like the captain planet version you know the ultimate version of all the the fusion of the units, I guess, or something. I'm not. <laughs> I gotta be honest here. I didn't really follow the story so much because um, I, I was so busy taking screenshots and they, they were talking about it. But um, did they say specifically if she is like the standalone Elena or is she like the con the com combination of like Elena, Wilk, Rick, Louise, etc.? Yeah, I think that's what, what they kind of alluded to. Is she was kind of the the culmination of all of those fundamental force units that have come along the, the five that have come along um, but she sure does look a lot like elena though so i, I think maybe that'll be kind of how they I, i'll be interested to see the story itself but that's kind of how they were portraying it so uh, but i think they both look amazing the units themselves look really good mm -hmm. yep for sure and here's a little bit of a uh, more detailed sprite here ethne and fundamental force uh, well i guess right here fundamental Force, not forces. So maybe mm -hmm. it's supposed to be like a, a singular force and not like a, a combination. I don't know. I don't know. We'll we'll, we'll, we'll see in the uh, in the story event. Right. Uh, so we're gonna go through these um, slides for the units. I gotta be honest here. There is a lot, so I'm probably not gonna linger too long on each one and just cover some of the main details. So Ethne, powerful mage. Um, fire, lightning, water, wind, and dark elements. She's got a lot of categories, and we know, um, you're going to see in the previous slide, we kind of know that she is a premium NeoVisions Plus. Uh, what do you think about that, though, Tommy? The fact that she's a premium Neo Plus. That's something that doesn't even exist on the JP server. There's no such thing as a premium Neo Plus. It's just, um, that's new for global, so... Yeah. It's a little, um, you know... <laughs> At this point, I don't think anything is that surprising, but um, I, I think it's you know again they're they're kind of I think they're cashing their chips here toward the end, and I think it's you know make a great unit, make a great story, and uh, you know you might as well make her premium at that point. Mm. And I'm kind of regretting now that I didn't get the clip of her her CG CG uh, movie because they actually showed it during the live stream, but it would probably take me forever to go find it again. Um, but so her CG looks pretty good too. Uh, where she like kneels down, her eye is glowing, she's covering it. So it seems like, you know, from the previous year, she was like pretty much a villain. But I guess now they're trying to make it to where she is like a villain that wants to redeem herself, I guess. Yeah, given that she was, uh, uh, you know, a good friend of Rick. I think they kind of at the in the Fundamental Forces 30 minute kind of uh, overhaul, they were talking through her backstory a little bit, how she was friends with Rick, and then she got corrupted by the Dark Crystal and all this stuff. So, yeah, I'm hoping that they'll have a redemption story for her, and it's, it sounds like she's going to be pretty integral to the next Clash of Wills that's coming up. So, But we'll talk about that in a little while. Mm -hmm. And then some other stuff. Again, we're, we're not going to cover everything, but she does get the like synergy bonus when Rick is on the party as well. Which is kind of cool. I kind of like that when they did that in the previous with uh, Sylvie Esther and then Rick and Wilk and all that. Um, that was kind of cool, I thought. Uh, and here's some stuff here. So we know she is uh, SLB based on one of the upcoming things. Um, her gear and all will boost up Rick's stuff. Uh, here's some of the, the really, really good information. Here's the SLB confirmation. But 90% Spirit Break, 50% Sword in Peril, and then some buffs and damage. Um, we don't know if there's a modifier buff in the kit, so based on this, we don't know if this is going to be like her final damage, etc. We'll know all that on Wednesday evening. Um, that's pretty cool, though, huh? 90% spirit break? That's good. Yeah, for sure. I think that's uh, uh, makes her SLB really, really good. Mm hmm For sure. Um, here's some more skills. Uh, it boosts ability modifiers, autocast, dark perfusion. This is kind of really cool, actually. Uh, so she auto casts like the magical focus ability every single turn, um, so she always has that no matter what. That's just kind of kind of awesome, honestly. Yeah, and that may be why they 
decided that she could be premium by giving her some of these skills that we haven't seen before, which are, you know, unique to, to a, a cool unit like this. Mm-hmm. Uh, see, I lost my place. Here we go. Uh, so she has Amplify. So this is similar to some of the current day JP units where they amplify um, 150 to multiple elements. She does the same thing. Fire, lightning, water, wind, and dark. So that's like a lot of elements. That's more than any JP unit has, I believe. One, two, three, four. Yeah, five of them. I think the highest JP is four. Mm -hmm. um, so that's pretty good. It's really good. Yep. Yep. Sets her apart. Mm -hmm. And then she has the uh, Dark Absorb for the whole party, including on the boss, which is kind of awesome. Um, her EX ability is 500 magic for all mages. That's good, too. It's not locked to um, basically anybody, because anyone that wants to equip this is going to be a mage. So that's pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then uh, Leader Skill, not... The greatest, 900 to all Clash outside of Clash, and then 1,000 inside of Clash. Uh, it's certainly not bad or anything, but, you know, we do have a little better. We have 1,200s outside of Clash with uh, some of the recent units. I guess it's kind of standard these days for global units. They, they're they always behind the curve on your skills, huh? Yeah, nothing surprising. It didn't get any better with Fundamental Force either, so <laughs> at least they were consistent. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was kind of happy to see this, that she does have some categories. Unfortunately, uh, Harbinger of Chaos isn't that really important, and Blessing of the Crystals is good to have, but it's not one of the one of the better ones. But still, it, it's good to have some categories. And then, of course, all the elemental categories is really awesome having that many. Yeah, that's that's quite a list she's got. Mm-hmm. And this was kind of cool, too. So this, her STMR is buffing up Rikt even further. So it seems like they're kind of, in a way, buffing up Rikt for the anniversary, but just not directly, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I did see a lot of comments in chat about making Rikt NV8, NV+, and I think, you know, we kind of feel like that ship has sailed, but um, maybe this is a way to kind of help bring him up to at least a better standard from last year with, with some of these buffs. Mm-hmm, for sure. Um, and this is cool as well, her Trust Mastery. Um, one thing I did see a few people saying this is like an amazing sword for all kind of units. Um, they, they, might, they might have missed the fine print. This is only for Ethne, so it's kind of similar to Elena's Crystal Sword, whatever. Only she can equip it, but it's really good. It's really good. Yeah, mm -hmm. yep, sure is. And this does require EX2, though, to obtain the recipe, so keep that in mind. It's kind of like the uh, special material you get from, you know, Rick, Tayo, etc. Uh, yeah. But that's cool. I think yeah, that's the sure. last... Oh yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, the vision card. And again, this is, this is where we kind of know that she's a premium unit. The vision card, uh, 170 attack and magic, 1,000% attack and magic, unrestricted. That's amazing. And then yep. 300 more for uh, Anthony and Rick only and then some other stuff so good card good card yep very good card yep how many of these do you plan to pull on day one tommy are you going <laughs> to keep the game going <laughs> <laughs> well i have i think when i get my uh vision world ten thousand, i think i'll have like two hundred eighteen thousand. so they're probably not getting any money out of me but i'll i'll definitely i'm definitely pulling for for these units i think it's at this point you know i know there's there may be better stuff coming but i think they did a, such a great job in these i'm gonna spend some of that lapis that i've been saving for about six months mm -hmm. um yeah for me definitely based on what i've seen i, I really like ethne um I, I think i think it's a cool cho choice of unit the cg movie was really cool not that i really keep them on in game but it was still cool and then like her kit seems from what we've previewed really strong and the card's really good so I'm definitely gonna go for her. Now here's the fun part. Give me a give me a guess, Tommy, on what she will cost to pity. So we've got like 45k for the generic pity for normal units. It's like 55 to 60 for typical premiums. And then we recently had like 83k for Zahn. So is F gonna set a new record? 90k, 100k for premium NV plus, or is she gonna be discounted? What do you think? Oh man, I think she's going to be up there. I mean, they're giving us sixteen thousand lapis with the rewards and stuff, so I'm I'm guessing, yeah, maybe ninety, ninety five k somewhere in there for for, for to get her. Mm. I so I certainly hope that is less, but um, you know, after Zahn, I don't know. <laughs> we'll have to see. Uh, yeah, yeah, that that, that that we should know on 
um, on Tuesday when the when the the, the in game news comes out. I hope. Yeah, well, I'm I'm looking forward to her. She's really cool. I'm gonna pull for her. I don't know if I'm gonna pull to pull pull for full pity, but I guess if I'm going in, I gotta go all the way in. So hopefully, it's not that painful. Mm-hmm. And then the other one is Fundamental Force. Uh, so she's a dual wielder, and she is not premium based on what we've seen from the slides. Of course, that can all change, or maybe we could have misinterpreted it, but she looks like she's not premium from what we've seen. Um, seems to be similar a little bit in some of the kits. They have the field uh, instead of dark. Hers is light. Um, a bunch of abilities. We're not going to go over all these individually, but uh, some killers, killers, killers. Let's see here. And here is some more... Uh, description. So this is like a buff to Warrior of the Crystals. So Elena, Rick, Yoshikiri, Louise, and Wilk. It gives modifier buffs, uh, stat buffs, etc. This is pretty cool yet again. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm actually really curious if all the stuff will make Rick viable because his damage is a little bit behind in Clash of Wills today. But uh, this year, he getting a bunch of buffs from a bunch of different, so different sources. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it sure is. I, they, it'd be even more amazing if they got Wilk back up to the curve, but we know that's not going to happen. <laughs> that seems uh, unlikely. But, I mean, hey, 500 modifier. Um, yep. And that does, helps. like, double dip, I think, on a skill. I don't think it's going to be anywhere near enough. But, uh, you know, I will recalculate him with all this new stuff once we get all the data. So we'll see. Yeah, I, hope, I hope he's so almost relevant at that point. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Some more abilities. Again, she has the 150 Amplify for multiple elements. Pretty awesome to see that. Uh, this is pretty cool. So 80% damage reduction for the party. It is a, uh, a Magnus ability. Uh, barrier, resistances, killers, and all. I mean, these kits seem really good. Really good. Her EX ability is 500 attack, but hers is for Clash of Wills only. And then... Um, the exact same same leader skill as the other one. Uh, some more categories. Blessing of the Crystals, Guardians, and Saviors. So the Guardians and Saviors, uh, those categories matter a whole lot in current day JP. So, you know, if she's still around that far into the future, that'll be really nice to have those categories. Yeah, I'll, I'll take your word for it. I, you know, hopefully we get to see some of those units because, yeah, they're, they're definitely powerful in JP. So hopefully we get there. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, and her STMR is, uh, I mean, it's good. It's not anything super special, but uh, it's good. It's good. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then she is a fist user, apparently, which is kind of interesting. Um, and again, just like the other one, at EX2, you can upgrade it to be pretty good. Thousand attack power. Uh, actually, you get that even at the normal version. I guess 100 extra, and then that's times 5. So it's actually 500 extra at EX2. Mm -hmm. Yep. Pretty yep. good. Yep. And then her vision card is honestly not nothing special. This is this is kind of how you can tell she's not premium. One fifty, um, only five hundred to uh, brave exes only. Like it's not terrible, but veterans probably have better at this point. Right, right, right. Yeah, and uh, Hiroki did I think at this point stop to say that he wanted to clarify that both units are NV plus units. That they're this. There was some discussion that maybe fundamental force was just a neo vision unit, but she knows she has NV plus. Oh, that's, that's very, very good to see because, you know, in my opinion, we have moved beyond the old Neo era. So we're in the Neo Plus era. So it's de de definitely good to see that uh, they are both right there. And another vision card. This is for a special step up we're going to get during the anniversary. So, you know, special step up. Um, it's good. It's good. It gives killers to uh, Demon and Fairy. If you've got Zahn, good to go. You can spread that to the whole party. 600 attack and magic so i mean it's it's a good card it's only 160 base though so honestly it's mostly if you just if you if you need the killers huh right right well and i'll say the artwork is amazing on it i, I definitely love it but yeah i'll have to see what the what the price of the step up is before i really think about pulling this one mm -hmm. now this one i hope i hope is on like just like as a toss in for the step up for the, to the two new units you know Right, yeah, that would be that would make sense, but we'll see if uh, see if they're just gonna make it stand alone to try to, you know, get get a little extra lapis out of people. Hopefully not. 
Uh, and then we're getting the uh, anniversary story event. Unfortunately, they kind of said right up front, it is the final chapter in the global story. Um, you know, you can read into that as you please, but that is what they say right here on screen. Um, you know, Louise invents a device, stop the looming threat of the Dark Crystal, enemy takes it by force. Then all five warriors go on a quest to get it back and defeat him once and for all. So it, I am kind of glad that at least they're going to give some closure to the, 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 the global story, you know? Yeah, I mean, I mean I'm, I'm a little sad. I know you've been posting some videos on the season four story for the actual main story that we may not see the true end of yeah, in global. But yeah, I'm, I'm glad too because this was a cool arc of stories and... And I do like, I mean, for the, as long as that last half hour was, I do like that Hiroki talked about how, you know, putting it into the FFBE world as a comic book was a way to introduce the, the characters without disrupting the, the flow of the story from JP to Global. So I, I thought that was kind of a cool um, segue into how they got Fundamental Forces into FFBE. Mm-hmm. And that, I think, is uh, the majority of the info on the units we're going to get a little bit more information about them on Tuesday, and then the full information we should get from the data mining on Wednesday evening or Thursday morning, depending on your time zones. And I will do another video giving you my final thoughts once we have the entirety of their kit on the wiki. And I really look forward to that because I'm leaning towards pulling for both of these. They both look really good. Agreed. And, and I think they did do a good job of calling out a lot of the different kits for the two unit uh, you know a lot of the different abilities and stuff within their kits so it, uh, i'm excited that that they look so good mm -hmm, for sure uh and then we get to some of the more interesting stuff for the stream at least in my opinion so first of all this is going to be our clash of wills the evil deity of unknown origin and if you've been playing the game for a while you should instantly recognize who this is um, and it is a multi-wave battle, which I'm super awesome uh, to see. I, I really have been wanting Clash of Will to be more like a trial. Um, I, know, I know it definitely is about as close as we're going to get um, for trial content, but going back to like a three-wave battle, similar to like the Venomous Vines and all that, I really enjoyed that kind of content. And multi-wave seems awesome. And then obviously this is based on Tel Fusanus. Do you think this is going to be anywhere near as challenging as Telfusanus was back in the day, Tommy? Ooh, um, I I hope. I mean, I I do I do love a good challenge, and that was probably I think that might have been the height of FFBE as far as like a community challenge at the time. It was amazingly well done, a lot of fun, a lot of collaboration between people. I I hope it's it's at least somewhat challenging and not just kind of a, a pushover kind of three three uh, stage fight but um i know there's a little light on resources right now so you know they may not have you know all the all the great thinkers to to make this a, a super difficult fight but i guess we'll see mm -hmm. for me personally i'm just really hoping it's like a complex ai um, I'm kind of assuming it sort of has to be if it's even based a little bit on Telfosonis because that one was really complex. Um, yeah. So that's what I'm hoping for. Like, I don't want to go in there and have it to where you just like ignore the boss for three turns, wait till the morale is filled, set up, do one burst, knock it from 100 to dead, and game over. Like, I don't want to see that. I want to see a very complicated, involved fight that is really punishing to your party and. If it ends up being like that, I'm probably going to get hate mail from, like, what, why did you ask for this if it's too hard? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, if they're going to go out, they might as well go out with something a little bit challenging, right? It's it's um, We've been lacking that for quite a while, so it would be great to, to get a, a, one final clash of wills that's, that's, that's going to be a real challenge. Mm -hmm. I certainly hope so. And here's a little bit more um, information right here. Not really too much information, but again, there's probably going to be a more detailed bulletin on Tuesday, which we're going to talk about a little bit more. And then hopefully, assuming you know schedules line up and all that, I will try to live stream it on Thursday morning, where you can see me go in there and get destroyed immediately. <laughs> I hope. I hope. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. If you do, then maybe you'll have to actually spend a weekend trying to figure it out. <laughs> mm -hmm. I actually missed that. You know, because some of the Clash of Wills, 
uh, back in the remember some of the older ones like people didn't kill them on turn on day one like we we some of them like no one on the server even got a kill until like day three or something when people were figuring it out I I, I remember that and I missed that yeah those those first like three or four Clash of Wills there were at least a couple that we couldn't really rank one on them because it was so hard to you know go 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 beat them at 99 percent levels and still kill them and get the damage cap so yeah i mean make it make it challenging let's let's have it be a fun fight mm -hmm. and now we're going to i think this is the next slide we're going to see what i was most excited about during the live stream yes this is it series boss battles new difficulty now real quick i want to um point out this is not the same thing as the stuff jp is getting um, JP has been getting also some updated series boss battles where they're, you know, they're, they're definitely more challenging than they were, but not very much. They're still mostly easy because there's so many missions to kill them with like weird team comps, like kill it with all companions or whatever. And therefore they can't make the ones in JP that challenging because you have to have a lot of team comps. The one on Global, if you remember, the Sephiroth EXT battle was very, very challenging when it came out. And then even like, I think it was like a year ago it came out, right? Even a year later, it is still probably the number one most requested fight from newer players. Like, how in the world do I beat this? That's what I'm hoping these are. Do you think they're going to be that hard as well, Tommy? I sure hope so. Yeah, and I, I, I talked to you about this ahead of time, but that back in September, that I was actually on your your news video for that week when they released the Safer Sephiroth, you know, extreme fight. And yeah, there was a good couple weeks where it was it was kind of you know not not a pushover for sure. I mean, I know you beat it pretty quickly, but it wasn't just you know go in and two turns and smash it. So yeah, I hope so. And it looks like. What is that? Chaotic Darkness and Kefka are the two that they are, they're showing here. Yeah, so. it's, it's it's four bosses. It's uh, Kefka, Chaotic Darkness, X Death, and Vlad. Unfortunately, Vlad the Sprite is actually just a crystal. That whole demonic oh. triple face is is actually a background image. The Sprite itself is just the crystal, and it, oh. the crystal is overlaid onto the background to give the illusion of it being that big. But um, that's Vlad. So this is four of them they're showing. Oh, and, cool. And now, I do want to say as well, this is probably the best four they could have chosen, honestly speaking. Now, the reason Sephiroth, even though it's tuned very hard because just numbers-wise it was tuned hard, it was also the last series boss battle introduced into the game. And unfortunately, I've said this a hundred times before, around the midpoint of SBBs, they really dropped off a cliff in terms of complexity because they were too hard. And Sephiroth was... Very, very simple. I mean, you look at the AI, he does like two moves a turn, right? It's it's extremely basic AI. And the only reason it's challenging is because the numbers are tuned so high. These are some of the first series boss battles that were ever released. X-Death was literally the first and one of the most complex. The Chaotic Darkness is has like five different stages with all kind of triggers and like seven different moves per turn. Kefka is four bosses HP locks, multiple phases, very, very challenging. Vlad has all kind of non-elemental damage. He has HP locks, the barrier. You've got to break over multiple turns. Like these, if the numbers are tuned to the current day like Sephiroth was, this could potentially be some of the hardest content Global has ever seen. Like, do, do, do people remember back in the day doing X-Death on day one? It was really hard, and most people couldn't beat it. Yeah, I do remember that. I remember Emperor was pretty tough too when he came out because you were trying to fight the, I think the you know the damage. Per, he was kind of healing as almost faster than you could damage him. So I remember the the Emperor being a challenging fight too when it first came out. So yeah, these were these were fun fights when they first were released back in the day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Like these are these are some of the best ones they could have possibly chosen. I'm so glad to see this and not something like Braska's final Aeon, which is oh. yeah, he has like. One move per turn. He does a sweep, <laughs> one stack of Mirage, and nothing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Shadow Lord. Oh, boy. Those are just terrible fights. Some of those old, old SPPs are the ones toward the end. Oof. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I cannot wait. So when is it even coming out? Seven? Four. Oh, man. It's not coming out this week. I guess that's fine because this week I'm probably going to be busy with 
Josh Will, so it's going to be something the following week. But, oh boy, I am... Are these all coming out on the same day? It looks like they are, huh? Yeah, I hope they spread them out. I mean, it would be great to have, you know, if... <laughs> If you're not if you're not cranking out a lot of other content, you know why not spread it out a bit more? But we'll, we'll see. I guess we'll see what they what they can handle before. I mean, Clash of Wills looks like it's going to be interesting for them to get that all like set up and ready to go, and then you know these these bosses will be kind of a little bit challenging too. So hopefully hopefully they'll be staged out a bit. Mm -hmm. And I really I truly hope. They are tuned as difficult as Sephiroth was. But it's got to be harder, though, because Sephiroth was, again, a year ago. So these have to be tuned much higher for an entire year of power creep. Right, right, yeah. I mean, and, and Sephiroth had the same basic mechanics to the fight, though, right? It was just tuned harder. So hopefully mm -hmm. they'll do the same here and just make these these uh, really tough. Mm-hmm. And then, then um, this might be, the X-Death fight might be, as close as I'll ever see on global to to to, to my boy Bart. Um, at the very least, we're, we're at the very least we're getting his final boss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think Bar uh, rest in peace to Bart. Any other Bart's updates? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, let's see. Oh yeah, and then we um they said that we're going to be getting overdrive on global. Um, they spent like five different slides explaining the Overdrive. I already made a video that shows it in-game and exactly how it works. So if you really want to know how Overdrive works, you can type Overdrive on my YouTube channel. It'll You can get the, the little introduction guide where I show you step-by-step -step how Overdrive works and I explain it. So I'm not going to go into all of that right here. But it is coming, and their example was Imperial Shield Wilhelm's Overdrive. He is going to be our first Overdrive unit. This was the fan uh, fan vote secondary winner. You know, Ohio won first, but he already had a unit, so now we're getting Wilhelm instead. What do you think of this unit, uh, Tommy? Is it exactly what you were expecting, or is he, you know, wearing too much armor for what you were hoping for? <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of people have been talking about Wilhelm lately. I, I, I did hear a lot of rumors about Bikini Wilhelm and all kinds of other <laughs> stuff, but I think he looks great. Another well-designed... A sprite so i'm happy with the way he looks here um maybe some other people might not be but i think he looks great yeah and it is true so if we're not gonna get you know the swimsuit wilhelm that people have been making jokes about for years um this does if you're gonna get an armored wilhelm i do think he looks really really good and I i'm very excited to see more of his kit uh it looks good it looks it looks great yeah, he does. And I'm wondering if he'll be maybe a couple weeks out. I'm guessing we'll get the, the Fundamental Forces units, and then maybe he'll be a couple weeks down the road. It sounded like a little bit of this was still under development like they have in the, you know, as they were going through the slides about Overdrive, there seemed like some of it was still under development. So um, might be a couple weeks out yet. Mm-hmm. And then um, they're just showing you his Overdrive. Uh, the Overdrive is the same as all, all the Overdrive units are all the same. Um, I guess Global could always change that, but it looks like, at least for now, his is going to be the same as every other Overdrive <coughs> that JP has. Um, 300 at EX1 and then uh, 200 at EX0 for the whole party. Or for Clash of Wills only. I'm sorry, for Clash of Wills only. Yeah, the Overdrive has categories, and his is for Clash of Wills, as expected. Yep. And that was the majority of the live stream. They also had a slide that I probably should have brought up that showed you a summary of all the, the gifts they're going to give you. It's like 16,000 lapis, a whole bunch of tickets and currencies and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, the usual anniversary. You're getting a whole bunch of gifts for the anniversary. And then, again, they spent, like, another 40 minutes talking about the uh, lore and the, the designers and how they came through all that. So overall, yeah. I mean, I guess it was a pretty good live stream, huh? I thought so. I mean, I, you know, up until again the fundamental forces stuff kind of, and it, and they did bring on Maya, the sort of the creator of the Ethne, and to talk about her. I think she helped design Ethne. I thought that was pretty interesting. It's just you know the twenty twenty five minutes of the backstory of how fundamental forces got created and put into the FFB universe was just a little bit too dragged out but but uh, you know overall i i thought i would have been interested just shorten it up a bit and uh and uh it would have been fine mm -hmm. um and again i definitely said we're gonna stay strictly positive but just you know speaking speaking honestly here 
I, I was a little bit disappointed that they didn't really even mention things like normal content. So you know we're getting the, we're getting Clash of Wills, which is awesome. We're getting the new series boss battles, which is absolutely amazing. Thrilled to get that, uh, but they didn't really cover at all if we're going to be getting you know Dark Visions, Vision World, Mog events, raids, all the normal kind of content. They didn't cover that at all. Do you have just any thoughts about why that would be, Tommy? Yeah, I'm just a little bit worried that it's. Because there isn't any. I mean, it's kind of been the trend lately. So maybe they're just whatever resources they have left. They're really focusing it on this this fundamental forces story, the cow event that goes with it, some of the you know series boss battle, extreme fights, and and they just are gonna not do a whole lot with the other stuff, which is which is sad because I mean some of the stuff that's easily con convertible and easily in quotes when you when you're limited in people resources that we could get from the JP side, uh, you know, it feels a little bit like a, a lost opportunity for them, but I, I get it if they, you know, they're trying to focus their energy on the cool eighth anniversary story and stuff that goes with it. Maybe some of that other stuff just gets a little bit left behind again. So it is what it is. Yep. We'll have to see. Uh, but all right. So thanks again for joining me, Tommy, to talk about anniversary stream and i know we're also scheduled to talk about the news together this coming tuesday assuming that you know neither one of us have anything come up that happens every now and then but uh hopefully we'll be getting together yet again in two days to discuss the remainder of this news cover anything that you know they, they show us in game but not in the live stream sounds great i'm looking forward to it as always all right so I will see you guys in two days for the, the in-game news. We'll talk about anything extra. See you then. Bye, everybody.